I became a 250k cloud engineer by ignoring popular advice that we've all been told is supposed to help us make more money. And I'm not special. I'm certainly not a genius, although sometimes I like to tell myself that I am. I just learned to think differently. Now, unfortunately, most people are stuck following advice that worked maybe 10 or even 20 years ago, or advice that was never even true in the first place. In this video, I'm breaking down seven pieces of popular advice that I chose to ignore and show you exactly what I did instead. So so you can just copy me. These are the same principles that have allowed me to build my AI cloud security consultancy and help over 700 students break into cloud engineering. And some of those students went on to land roles at companies like AWS. Now, by the end, you have the exact frameworks that I used, and I'm going to challenge some beliefs that you probably didn't even know that you had. So let's start with number one, get all the certifications first and then apply. The reality is certifications are procrastination dressed as productivity. Now, when I started, everyone told me to get your AWS cloud practitioner, then the solutions architect, then the sysops administrator, then the security specialty, just stack up those certifications and then you'll be ready. I spent a whole month chasing certifications and then I applied for jobs and nobody was getting back to me, no interviews, no callbacks. And that's when I realized I was just delaying the uncomfortable part, which is actually building real projects, breaking things and fixing them. Now the certifications made me feel productive, but they weren't moving the needle because I had only 90 days to get a new job as a cloud engineer and I wasn't making any real progress at the start. So here's what I learned. Certifications prove that you can pass tests. Projects prove that you can solve problems and companies Guess what? They hire problem solvers and not people that can just take tests. The framework that you can take is the minimal viable competence. And let me explain. Instead of collecting certifications, I developed what I call the minimum viable competence. One or two certs just to get past the resume filters. And even then, a lot of cloud engineers don't even have certifications and companies still hire them. And from there, I went all in on building projects that told stories. I didn't just deploy an EC2 instance. I built a system that reduced processing time from two hours to 15 minutes and handled traffic spikes that were 100 times bigger automatically. So you want to think in terms of outcomes and impact and not just tools. That's what gets you interviews at 250K or more. And I'm sure you've heard this many times. Just work really hard and you'll get promotions. The reality, hard work is table stakes, not a strategy. Now, early in my career, I was that person. First one in, last one out, 12 hour days, weekends. I thought visibility plus effort equaled promotion, but I was wrong. After years of grinding, I watched someone else get promoted. Someone who just worked normal hours. Why? Well, because they understood something that I didn't. Past a certain point, your career isn't about how hard you work, it's about how much value that you can unlock for the business. I was optimizing the wrong thing. I was working hard on execution and completing tasks, but what the company actually needed was someone who could think strategically, communicate to leadership, and make decisions that move metrics. So here is the framework, value multiplier thinking. At 80K to 150K, you're paid to execute tasks. At over 250K, you're paid to multiply the value of others or make decisions that impact the business. When I shifted from, I'll work harder on implementation to what's the real bottleneck this business is facing, everything changed. I stopped trying to be the best technician and I started thinking like an engineer who understood the business problems and then technology was meant to solve it. The takeaway, Every quarter, ask yourself, am I being paid to execute or to enable? And if you're still just executing, you're capping your income. Start looking for ways to multiply value, mentoring others, improving processes, identifying constraints that your company hasn't even seen yet. Number three, master all 200 AWS services. Now the reality, breadth is the enemy of breakthrough. When I started, I thought I needed to know every AWS service or at least 50, maybe even 30. This is where most people waste months or if not years trying to learn services and tools that aren't even really being used. They're trying to master everything, waiting until they feel ready. You will never feel ready and trying to learn everything means that you'll never go deep enough on anything that actually matters. So here is what got me hired. Deep expertise in the core four, EC2, S3, IAM, and VPC. From there, CloudFront, Lambda, RDS, and DynamoDB, as well as CloudWatch and CloudTrail, and more recently, Bedrock 2. And from here, you're pretty much sorted if you understand those as far as AWS goes. And the framework, well, instead of trying to learn 200 services at 1% depth, I learned a few key services at 80% depth. But more importantly, I learned how they connected together in real systems. I I didn't learn S3 in isolation. I built a project where East2 instances needed to securely access S3, which required IAM roles, all sitting in a custom VPC. That's how real cloud systems work. Services connected together to solve business problems. Number four, technical skills are what matters the most. 
The reality, past 150k a year, communication determines your ceiling. This one's controversial, but it's a truth that most people don't want to hear. The difference between a 150k engineer and a 250k engineer isn't just technical ability. Your technical ability at that point is actually really good. It's actually communication. I used to think that this is nonsense. I'm an engineer. I don't need to worry about this. That was until I watched someone else who I felt was less technically capable than me get promoted to senior cloud architect. And I didn't really understand it until I realized that technical skills aren't enough anymore. If you want to go up the levels and get promotions, then you need more skills, which I didn't have at the time. You need engineering leadership, which is your ability to explain complex technical decisions to non-technical stakeholders. So you could walk into a room with executives and then make them understand why your architectural choices mattered to the business. And here is a framework that you can copy. For every single technical decision that you make, you need to be able to explain it in three different ways. To engineers, technical implementation details, trade-offs, constraints. To managers, timeline, resource requirements, and risk mitigation to executives, business impact, cost implications, and competitive advantage. When I started doing this, I stopped just building things and started explaining why they mattered. My value skyrocketed and so did my income. Practice explaining your work out loud. Stand in front of the mirror and imagine that you're speaking to a room of 50 people. Record yourself. It's all about reps, reps, and reps. Yes, it feels weird, but you just do it anyway. Number five, stay at your company for years and show loyalty. I do think this is shifting fast today as more and more engineers are realizing their companies simply don't care anymore and their bottom line profits is all that matters. But it wasn't like that when I was coming up. The reality is strategic job changes accelerate income growth. Here is an uncomfortable truth. The fastest way to 250k, 350k, 500k salary is not climbing a ladder at one single company. It's strategic job changes every couple of years. I stayed at my first role in a 4500 company for too long. I was learning a lot and I was leading teams, but I was also comfortable. Same routine, same people, same kind of projects. I knew my job inside out and I thought loyalty would be rewarded eventually but it wasn't. The same two to 3% raises every year and I just got fed up. I jumped shipped and saw a massive boost in my income and the data backs this up. Internal promotions don't increase your income as much as external moves. But here is the key. These can't be random moves. They need to tell a story. So still this framework, skill stacking for salary jumps. Each role should add to a new dimension to your capabilities. Let's say role one, call cloud engineering, which I class as execution. Then role two, add architecture and design, which is more strategy. And after a few years, role three, add team leadership or niche specialty, which acts as a force multiplier. When you can tell this story in interviews, I went from executing on infrastructure to designing systems to leading teams that deliver them. You're not just an engineer anymore. You're a strategic asset to a company and they will pay you very handsome. Number six, follow tutorials and videos until you understand everything. The reality, understanding comes from building and teaching and not just consuming. I spent so much time consuming tutorials, courses, documentation. I thought if I just consumed enough, eventually I would understand. But here is what actually created understanding. I forced myself to build projects and then teach what I was learning online. I started making YouTube videos, explaining cloud concepts, and then documenting my progress publicly on LinkedIn. This forced me to think at a level above just following instructions. Teaching requires you to understand the why, not just the how, which is the biggest gap when it comes to watching tutorials. They show you how to do it, but you never really develop an understanding of why you need to do it. Why one service or tool over another? Side note, this building in public also had a second order of consequence, which was that recruiters were finding me and offering me interviews for new roles, not the other way around. I didn't have to apply for jobs because they were being handed to me. The framework for this, explain the why and not just the how. When you can explain why you choose RDS over DynamoDB to solve a specific problem, that's when you stop being a tutorial follower and you start being a real cloud engineer. And number seven, wait until you're confident before you apply. The reality, confidence is built through action, not preparation. This is the biggest lie in not just our industry, but just in life in general. You feel like you should wait until you feel ready, so you get more information, and you feel like you just need one more piece of information for everything to work. But the truth is, you will never feel completely ready, and that's okay. Most people see the world black or white. They think in absolutes, success or failure. I'm not ready for the job, or I am ready for the job. This is binary thinking, but real life is messy and has nuances. You need to learn non-binary thinking, which means that you can hold conflicting truths at the very same time. I feel like an imposter and I still apply for 100 jobs today. I screwed up today and I've done some good things as well. I'm scared 
and I can still do it. This way of thinking changed everything for me. So if you're trying to break into cloud or progress into higher paying roles, treat job applications as part of your learning process, not as the final test. Not because you're ready, but because applying is part of getting ready. You'll learn more from five real interviews than from five more months of learning. Every rejection is data. Every interview question that you can't answer is a gap that you now know that you need to fill. This is how you actually get good fast. Now look, the reason most people never reach 250K or more as a cloud engineer isn't because they're not smart enough or not technical enough, it's because they are following advice that keeps them stuck. They're collecting certifications instead of building projects. They are working harder instead of working strategically. They are learning breadth instead of going deep. They're hiding their communication weaknesses instead of developing them. They're staying loyal instead of being strategic. They are consuming instead of building. And they're waiting for confidence instead of building it through action. I ignored all of the advice and it worked out for me. You need to think clearly about what actually moves the needle. You need to understand that this career isn't just about technology. It's about business value, solving problems, communication, strategy, and knowing when to make the hard moves. As always, I'm rooting for you. Now go and ignore some popular advice. Good luck.